YouTube channel, Amber's Awfully Awesome Art. Today I will be doing two triple ring pours on a 15 by 30 canvas. They are level three and gallery wrapped, available at Michael's. I have sprayed some water to stretch them out in the back. And the reason why I do that is I don't want the paint, the weight of the paint to pull in the center. And if I resin them, I don't want the weight of the resin to pull in the center. I've also um, applied some painter's tape and push pins. And I will be using interference slash pearl colors today. And um, they are just so interesting. And they all look white until they hit a black base. So here is my Amsterdam Ramp Black. And I also have been testing out a new recipe, so I will be sharing that with y'all at the end of the video. So in this pour, I will be using Amsterdam Pearl Green mixed with this Little Piggy Pinot Grige, which is an interference um, green gold shift pigment. And I also mixed uh, Golden Acrylic Interference Green as well. And that was my consistency, and this will be followed by Amsterdam Pearl Blue and I mixed this Little Piggy Velvet which is a blue color um, interference pigment and it's also mixed with golden acrylic uh, blue interference paint as well. And my last color is Amsterdam Pearl Violet mixed with golden acrylic violet uh, interference violet and followed by this little piggy sequence, which is a violet interference pigment. Um, and I will be using 12 ounce cups to fill each color. Um, so now I have layered my colors and I have put a layer of lamp black in between them. So there is uh, my green mixture and then in the middle will be blue and then purple at the end or violet. <clears throat> I will lay a little little layer of um, my lamp black base. I don't want too much because then I'll have to stretch out a lot of the paint and I want my rings to show. So here I am popping some bubbles and I saw a goober right there so I had to take it out. Um, and so yeah, so I'm stretching this paint out. Um, I'm still trying to learn um, how much paint you need on a canvas for these. Uh, I sometimes end up with too much, so it en ends up messing up the rings or um, it's, yeah, it's just too much paint. So I'm still playing around with that. And here I am popping some more bubbles because I had just mixed this paint. So also a good tip is to mix your paints um, at least 24 hours before you do your pour so that there aren't that many bubbles. Um, so here I am going with my uh, blue interference and just keep a steady hand. And I wanted the blue to be in the center so there it is right there and just gently pull that away and the rings already look really really pretty and um, now I will lay my next color or pour my next color which is the green interference. Um, keep your elbow um, kind of firm against your rib cage when you are pouring uh, or doing a ring pour. Uh, this is called a tree ring pour, I believe. So yeah, to keep your hand steady, keep your elbow against your rib cage. And I noticed I kind of messed up the ring, my uh, finger touched it. So I just went back and made a few more rings there. And there is my interference violet. Um, it's a really pretty purple color and I think mixing them with the different uh, paints and pigments really made the colors pop. And now I will basically stretch my rings out. 
So the same concept applies um, as it would if you were stretching out a deconstructed bloom. So you want to stretch the parts out you don't like first and stretch the parts out that you like last. So here I am just adding more paint so that there is some uh, uh, way for the paint to move around and I'm gently going around because I want to keep the integrity of the rooms. And uh, this was a pretty big canvas for me to do these on so I was having a little trouble. I, I mean it is a little heavy with the paint and then it, it is a level three canvas. So yeah, here I am just going around and making sure that I'm getting my edges and um, I'm tilting the sides that or the areas I don't like first and I do like the negative space so I was happy about uh, keeping those spaces there and this one turned out really really pretty the next one that I'm going to do will be more of a warm color palette and I was able to find uh, golden acrylic interference orange and red and they were really really pretty as well but this one turned out really nice I, I like this one better than the next one that I will do but yeah here I will just stretch this out kind of shape my rings up cover my sides uh, I would recommend you paint your edges before uh, you do this on your canvas so that uh, if you do have some exposed canvas and you like can't mess around or um, put some paint on it, then it is covered by um, your covered edges that you have painted already. So yeah, here um, is the final result of this, the wet result, and I will pull you guys up for a close up in the next clip. Here is a close-up of the wet results of this ring pour. I like how this turned out. Uh, there was enough paint stretched off to where the rings didn't move, so I'm happy that um, it uh, they stayed. And next we will be doing a warm color palette. And yeah, I will join y'all in the next uh, clip. So this canvas will have the same concept of the triple uh, tree ring pours, but in a warm color palette. So there's golden acrylic uh, um, interference red, and this will be followed by golden acrylic interference orange. Um, this is a really cool color. I, I never knew they had uh, an orange interference. And this will be followed by Amsterdam Pearl Yellow. That is an interference yellow color. And guys, I apologize about uh, the messy table. I immediately started um, pouring on this canvas right after I did the first one. So there's my consistency right there. I noticed that the golden um, paints, even though I used the tube paints, they were a little bit thinner. So it's good to have your paints a little thicker when you're doing um, a pour like this. And I will basically do the same thing, and that is um, pour a little bit of my black. So yeah, there's my black. And I will layer a layer of my interference paint and then a layer of black until my 12 ounce cup is full. And these are the cups that I will be using. And here I have, um, laid some of my black uh, Amsterdam lamp black uh, base paint onto the canvas and I pop some bubbles and there is that interference uh, red right there I think I had too much of that um, but I did get some really cool cells from it you really don't want cells in a ring pour but Sometimes it's due to the reaction of your pouring medium and the paint uh, or the paint brand that you're using. So I noticed that with the golden acrylic interference paints, I, I did get a lot more cells. And there is my um, golden acrylic orange. And this will be followed by Amsterdam 
pearl yellow. Um, I think I had too much paint on this one because I did have my center ring, which is the interference red. It moved so much, like it lost its shape, which I will show you guys in a minute. Um, but yeah, I do like um, those cells right there that popped up. And I will basically do the same thing. I will stretch out the parts I do not really care for first. And then I will stretch the parts that I do like out last. <clears throat> and again, I need a lot of practice with the stretching um, because I feel like I tend to leave a lot of paint on the canvas. Uh, but you learn by practicing. So guys, always practice. It makes you better. Um, so yeah, I will let y'all enjoy the process and I will come back for a close-up. So y'all, here is the close-up of the wet results of my second um, triple ring pour. Uh, those cells look really cool. Um, as you see, I kind of lost um, the center ring pour. I thought I added too much layering of the interference red, so I, 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 didn't, I don't really care for it. But it doesn't look too bad. I do like... Um, the orange and the yellow how they turned out but there was a lot of paint on this one so definitely should have stretched out more and here is my first one um, the one that I really really like uh, and here is another close-up of my first triple ring pour um, I really do like this one it's still drying um, as I mentioned before these do take some time to dry, so don't touch them. And also remember to scrape the bottom of the canvas so that your rings um, don't like fall or flow off. So that's another tip. Make sure you're checking on it um, every like 10 minutes or so. But yeah, this is um, the next day. I don't care for this center area, so I definitely may create a black negative space. Um, uh, it'll probably add more interest, but I, I'll probably think about it. So yeah, here you go.
Y'all, here's the recipe that I have been testing out. It is 45% U.S. Floetrol, 35% gloss medium, and 20% paint. And your consistency should leave a five second trace. So it does need to be thick. So if it is thin, then just add a little bit more paint to get that consistency. I didn't add any water. This works for flip cups as well and ribbon pours. And let me know what y'all think about these pours. They're not dry yet, so I'll share the dry results in my next video. But until then, thanks for joining me. Stay safe, stay classy, and stay awfully awesome, guys. Take care.